Welcome everybody to our MySoNet Facebook Live. We're so glad you're with us. I'm Vanessa Dyson and I manage the US Event Educators. So we're gonna do things a little different today. I happen to have all of them in the office with us this week. We've been doing some training and planning for 2023. So we thought it would be a great opportunity for all of them to share what their favorite part of the MySoNet ecosystem is. So we're gonna kind of take turns some of the event educators you've already met, they've done some of our other MySonet Facebook Lives, and I have some new faces for you. So we'll introduce those because you might see them in a future episode. So because everybody's sharing their favorite, we are gonna be jumping all over the software. So if you're not sure if that program is in the software that you own, just check with your retailer, they'll be able to answer that for you. And if it's not, and you wanna upgrade your software so that it is, they can handle that for you as well. So I'm gonna start with my favorite, which is the fonts. I love all of the different fonts that are in the embroidery software. There's 245 fonts in there. So you are gonna find fonts that you love. Now this wall hanging back here, this is a thing that I do with my grandchildren. Um, and, and so it kind of becomes a little game when they leave, everybody tries to remember, you know, one of the sayings. So, you know, see you later, alligator, after a while, crocodile, bye-bye, butterfly, you're too sweet, parakeet, give a hug, ladybug, see you soon, Mr. Raccoon, out the door, dinosaur, and blow a kiss, goldfish. So I was able to use a different font for each one of those as well as use the MySoNet library to find the appropriate designs. So all I had to do was search in the library for goldfish or search in the library for raccoon or ladybugs. It was so easy to put something together like that and to have all of the designs and the fonts that I needed at my fingertips. So that is one of my favorite things. There's also a couple spots on there. If you see up by the crocodiles, you can sometimes bring um, buttonholes into the hoop. So there's buttonholes in the software as well as the buttonholes in our machines can come into the embroidery area and you can perfectly space your buttonholes. So that's really fun as well. You can see I wove ribbon through mine, but you can bring any of your decorative stitches into the hoop as well. So even ones that are built into your machine, you can add those to your embroideries. So in some of my spaces where I felt like there was a little too much gap there, I just did some decorative stitches on my machine. So worked perfectly. Now, I have Kathy from with me. Kathy is new to our education event team. And Kathy, what is your favorite part of the software? Thank you, Vanessa. My favorite part is our Spyro Wizard. And we can find the Spyro Wizard in our software under our Create tab. So here's all of our fun wizards. Just gonna select wizard. It's gonna open up to a pop-up type screen in which as a wizard, you it asks and answers questions. Now, Kathy, this looks like the Spyro graph that we played with as kids. It does, and it works very much like that, except so, we don't have to lose all those little wheels and cogs <laughs> and things. And we can put them into stitches. We can. Awesome. They're so much fun. And it was one of my favorite toys when I was a, when I was a kid. So that's why it's your favorite in the software. It is, right. So first off, you can set the size of um, what you want to have your Spyro end up to be. I'm gonna do something a little bit larger just so that we can easily see it. So I'm gonna choose 150. This will be my maximum diameter and I'll just click on random and it will automatically generate a new Spyro for me. And if I wanna let the software do all the thinking for me, I can just continually click random until I find something I like. And then once I find something I like, I can just say, okay, and it brings it immediately into my software. That looks like a spider web. It sure does. We should add we some We could do a spiders. Halloween thing. We could do a <laughs> Halloween thing, absolutely. But let me show you a little bit more uh, about the uh, about the Spyro in making your own changes. On the right hand side, we have, well, that's kind of a boring one. We got to do another one. Okay, <laughs> something a little more oh, exciting. Let's do, there we there go. There we go. That's a nice one. 
on the <laughs> side, you have a number of different choices to make. So you can play around with these and, and get different looks. I won't go over all of them today, um, but all the information you need to learn all about this is in your guides and they download right. with your MySonet software. So this is the number of petals. And you can see, I can click on the slider bar and change wow. how many petals are in it. I can also change the petal type. Yes. So I get all kinds of different options. If I wanted to add another color, because you know, one color is boring and the original Spirograph <laughs> came with four colors. I can come down here to my palette and let me add a, a green blue here, bring that up on screen. And I want to change my rotation because right now it lands on top of the original. So you okay. don't actually see it. So I can um, alter my rotation and I'm also going to take it off ghost mode. So you can see both colors wow. fully. That's very cool. It is very cool. And you can change the sequence of stitching as well. It's just as easy right now, pink and green stitch. If I want to make green stitch first, I just switch it and it nice. does it instantly. Now, Kathy, I have to ask you, because these are really cool and they look really cool in the software, but what would I do with them? So I have a couple of different things I brought with me today. This one is a wreath. So the spiral part of this design is the brown that made my wreath. I was going for a grapevine wreath look. And then I added some design shaping with my little purple flowers. And then using one of our fonts in the MySonet software, Rosemary, I use, I put my monogram right there. Very cute. So a nice little simple thing. And no one so would you really used it as a frame. I did. And, I used it base. as a frame, as a, as a base. I was mm -hmm. going for a wreath look. Okay. Very nice. I also had a lot of fun this week. It's been a lot of fun being here with everybody else. So this one I just got stitched out this morning. I, I love this that. one. It's a snowman. Whoops. You got it, Vanessa? Yeah, thanks. So I created three of the exact same spirals in three different sizes to make the three um, parts of the snowman body. And I simply went into our super designs and found a bow tie. The little arms are a twig from, I think, the wreath or floral category. Um, got the eyeballs out of the new emojis and added a cowboy <laughs> hat because, you know, I, I have a wayward uh, snowman here. <laughs> Very cute. And then one more. This is just a little sampler. So this um, shows off some of the different variants by adding different petals and additional colors and just a lot of fun. It's one of those things you could sit and click all night. I joke with my husband and tell him that my MySonet software is like video games. <laughs> video games for the sewer in the right. software. Keeps me out of trouble. My favorite is your skirt, oh, though, thank you. here. I love this idea. So give us a second as we kind of zoom in on that. But look how beautiful this is where she used the spiros as flowers and then added some leaves. I just love that. And it's all around the bottom, front and back of her skirt. So the leaves came right out of the software as well. They are part of uh, Super Designs of Encore. And because you can change the size and shape of them, some of my leaves are skinny and some of them are wider, different sizes. Just change them up. I created a whole bunch of flowers and just matched them up with the stems. Very fun. They And they're also different. They're, they all look completely right. different. Right. And I, I love that I just ups upcycled an old denim skirt that I had. Made it way more fun. Right. Absolutely. Amy, do we have any questions about anything so far? We do not have any questions, but we have a lot of comments on how precious the wall hanging is. And <laughs> they love the skirt. So they love both projects. Everybody Great. Loves <laughs> Good. We hope we inspire you guys today. All right. So next... We have uh, Nancy Bronstein. Now, I know a lot of you know Nancy because she has done some of our other My Sonet Facebook Lives. But she had to, you know, talk about a specific topic. Today, we get to ask her what is actually her favorite topic. Well, Vanessa, my favorite, since I am a quilter, is the quilt block <laughs> wizard. Uh, there are a, a number of different wizards in the software. I'm, I know you know this, but I'm talking to our audience the wizards make different tasks super easy. It's basically you get an idea and it's you 
click, 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 and you see it all ready to be stitched out, just about. So it's super easy, and I'm going to walk through how to do that and also the different options in a minute. All right. But before I do, maybe I, I'm going to just show you a sample because I um, took uh, some designs I made in the Spiral Wizard and took them into the Quilt Block Wizard in order to quilt them. So we have more Spiro designs. So another way to use Spiro designs. Let's and, see. And before I show you this one, I also use the Spiral Wizard a lot to quilt in the hoop. If I have a quilt that has blocks that are a certain size, like say they're four by four blocks that are repeated, I'll make a spiral design that is that four by four size or a little bit smaller and just put a spiral in each block and then do some free motion in the other areas. So it would make a great quilting design or quilting pattern because it is just running stitches. Yeah, yeah. So this is my wall hanging. I didn't bring a quilt. We'd be, a kind of tight quarters here to pull <laughs> one of those up. But I have three panels here. The um, top panel, let's see if we can bring it close I, enough. I'll, I'll come into you. Oh, okay, so, good. Yeah, good. So you just this is full right service there. here, unlike when and we do it our, our, yeah. ourselves. This one is from the Spiral Wizard, and I also added um, Derwent Ink Tense pencils to give it that rainbow watercolor. So effect. you kind of colored it in. Yeah. And this in the background is a stippling pattern. I don't know if you can come in any closer, Sonny, to show the stippling. So you see the stippling there in the corner. So that's what she did with Quilt Block Wizard. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Then this middle section, I made a whole bunch of different spiral designs and then used the uh, contour uh, uh, choice in the quilt block wizard. It looks almost like echoing, but it gives you a slightly different effect. I'm just going to move it up. Just leave it still. Yes, okay. It still. I'm just not used to having a, a camera person. <laughs> 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 and uh, then maybe you can pull back and just get the whole block, Sonny, and get the full effect. Okay. So then the last block is uh, just a simple spirograph, sim similar to the first one without the ink tense pencils. And I just did echoing, but fairly tight echoing on this one. So I'll show you how you would go about to do that. So I'm going to go over to the software. And so this is my hoop here. And up in my, up in my toolbar up here, here's all the different wizards. And I'm going to choose the quilt block wizard here. And with the quilt block wizard, there's all sorts of things you can do with this. The first choice, if you click this um, circle, you can make a block with a central embroidery design. Then you choose what sort of quilting you want around that central design. Or you can have a shape that will have the quilting on the inside of it and then the outside will not have any stitches. Or the opposite with this next dot. Nancy, can we make this box a little bit bigger? That's a great idea. You might be able to see a little bit better. So and the, I think the picture stayed the same size, but <laughs> we, we tried, we tried. So now the opposite is you have a central shape that has no quilting on the inside, but quilting all around it of your choice. And you could do something in here, like you could put a rose, you could put a monogram, you know, whatever you want as that central image on top of that. Then you could also just choose filled quilt block, no inner shape. And that will allow you to choose your quilting technique and just fill that space up. So um, I've used this for when I've wanted to make quilted fabric. Like I made some oven mitts, for instance, and I bought some of that fabric that's uh, heat resistant, made my own quilted fabric. Then um, you could also use it to texture fabric. If you have, say, some fabric that's a little blah, you could add some texture to it just by adding different quilted shapes in the hoop there. Then our last choice is where it will just stitch out the shape that you choose, square, rectangle, whatever. I'm going to demo the first one because that one is most colorful. And um, since we're talking about embroidery, I thought that would be our best choice. And I think this is great, Nancy, because I think a lot of people, when, we, when they, they're afraid to add embroidery to their quilt because then they don't know how to quilt it. So to put an embroidered block in, they're like, now what do I do with that? So I'm going to quickly show you how to use this. So the first thing, I click Next, and I choose my shape. And there's a whole bunch of different shapes here. 
Then I click next again. I've chosen a square. Then I'm going to open up my embroidery and find something on um, my desktop that I've saved previously for this, my dragonfly. I'm partial to dragonflies. <laughs> And now I have my dragonfly chosen as my central image. I click next. Now the first choice is how tightly you want this quilted. Well, how, where are the quilting stitches gonna start in relationship to your central embroidery? Right now they're five millimeters away. I'm gonna go over to the left and on outline, I'm gonna change that to three and you'll see that the quilting is gonna start a little closer. Then I click next. And this is stippling. Now this is one type of stippling if you had, say, a southwestern design, you could choose straight stippling instead, and you will end up with uh, more of a southwestern design. Or you could make this uh, typical stippling and have it be micro stippling if you, you if you made it tighter. Or you could have straight lines for straight line quilting, diamond shapes, echoes, and all of these can be made tighter or looser, contour. And there's all there's many, many, many more choices. I'm going to go back to Echo to show you the end result. Quick finish because I'm running out of time because we have so many more people with great <laughs> things to tell you. And I'm getting I'm getting the the, the, the evil eye here that I gotta be quiet. So there's the, the final result for the quilt block wizard. And Nancy, we have a lot of questions for you. Okay. So the first question is: can you make the spiros fit? And within a triangle shape. Hmm. Yes. There yes. Are some. Yeah, there are some. They're telling me there are. I have not done it. I will. Um, they they have uh, tried it. Other two are two other educators here by my side. Assure me that you 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 can do triangles. The benefits of having a whole group here. <laughs> Now, I know you can do that in crow stitcher for sure. I've been doing it today all day for our, for our new long arm. <laughs> and they also want to know what size are the blocks on the runner? Oh, I think they're probably about, I think I did it in the 260 by 260 hoop. Yeah, these look like a, about a 10 inch, the top and the bottom block. The middle one is a little longer. It's a little bit more of a rectangle. Yeah, I think that's 360 by uh, 260, the middle one. Wonderful. And then I do have a few questions for Vanessa. Would now be a good time to ask. Sure. Okay. So if, <laughs> one of the questions is, if you subscribe to the software, but you do not have a Wi-Fi enabled machine, can you use the library designs? Yes. You can purchase the designs individually. So you can buy an individual design on your computer. They kind of range in price from actually free or 99 cents to, I think, about $10, depending on the design. Perfect. And then when you purchase the software, do you get all of the updates or do you have to pay for those? If you purchase the software, we do updates if it involves a new attachment or a new hoop or something like that. Other than that, you would, you would wait until we had a new software for sale that would that would have new programs in it. Thank you. All right. And next, oops, sorry. <laughs> next we have Karen Charles. And again, Karen, many of you know because she has done a lot of our Facebook lives as well. So Karen, what's your favorite? Oh, you everybody knows I use every bit of the software. <laughs> I, there's nothing that I don't use, but I love photo stitch. I think there's so many things. Now, Nancy didn't show you this, but she actually made this picture, an uh, image of her husband in photo stitch. And isn't that wonderful? And she did it in one color, the monochrome, but you really get the sense of who he is looking at this picture. It's just fascinating. Isn't that cool to see something like that in stitches? And Karen's going to show us a couple more options in that photo stitch program to make it look a little bit different. This, this is just one color of thread on a white background to create this photograph. Now, this is a picture that I did a, um, a few years ago, and it was a daughter of my friend. And I was just... A, I could not believe how easy it was to do this because it took me about 30 seconds to make the design and I played around with the number of colors 
Originally, it was 12 colors, and I added a 13th color, and then the color for her lips became more prominent. And so I, I stuck with 13 colors. And really, I went from making the design to stitching it out in less than a minute. It was amazing. That's good, because it probably took you a couple of hours to stitch <laughs> out. So it's good that the uh, development process was fast. Right. And I'll, I'll show you what option I use when I open up the software. This was the first one. Uh, where you can make a photo stitch. It's kind of like a dithering stitch where the colors shade on top of each other, but that is really nice. Now, what I love even more is this option, which is a tile option. And this one gives you the feeling and the look of a hand stitch. When you zoom in, you'll see that it almost looks like a um, like, cruel like or something, point. like needlepoint. And it's so easy to do this. You can take your own photos of anything you want to and turn it into an embroidery and you you can be embroidering in just no time at all the difference with this one is i had more colors i had up to 20 i think i did 25 colors with this one but when you can take your own picture and turn it into an embroidery it to me that is unbelievable a few years ago i never keepsake. would have believed i could have done that but it really does make a, a keepsake so let me show you in our my sonet embroidery software how we are going to go about doing this so it is under the create tab photo stitches there and i have two choices about how i can use this i can choose one that will fit into a hoop or i can make my own size uh rectangle or square i'm going to choose the first option because i usually have an idea how big it is i'm just going to make it to fit uh the hoop so the first option you're seeing create color photo stitch embroidery that's what i use for uh the face the little girl's face where you saw it with 13 colors and that was the create color photo stitch and i ran it through and just answered the questions as i went and the design was created without me making really any changes to it other than to add an extra color now for the tile option i'm going to go down to the fourth option create color tile photo stitch embroidery and then what i'm going to do is touch next and i'm going to load the picture and I have this design. If I scroll down, it's right here. And this was some copyright-free artwork that I found. And this was my first time that I tried it. So um, the next time I started using some of my photographs from my garden, I've, I've done one of an iris and I've done a, a few different ones. But this was just an experiment to see how it worked. And I'm going to touch next. And this is where I can crop the design. If I'd like to make it a little bit smaller or maybe I want to just do one sunflower, I can crop it very quickly. I don't have to go anywhere else to adjust the photo. But I left it this whole size that it was. And I'm going to touch next. Now, look at how simple that is. I don't have to really make a lot of choices. This is something that's very, very easy for me to say, okay, I'm starting the design and with just <laughs> touching the word next, you'll get to see what the end result is. It's a wizard. If you don't like it, you go back and make changes. So they've really done a lot of the thinking for you. All right. So you get to see what it's going to look like exactly. before you stitch it out. For sure. So now I'm, I'm not going to erase it, but if I did want to erase the background, this is the screen that I would do it on. And I'm going to touch next. And this, this was a, a person you could make some adjustments to the red eye if you were seeing some, you know, some shadows in the person's face that you didn't want to. I often, I very rarely do anything here. And I'm going to touch next. And here is where I'm going to see the width and the height of the design. And this is the size that I made it. When I touch next, you're going to get a message that pops up and it says, this is going to be a large photo stitch design. It'll take a little while. It doesn't say not to do it. It just says it's going to take a little while. It's your warning. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm going to say, okay, because I, I'm pretty sure I know that it's going to take a little while. Now, this is the interesting screen because you'll see it's showing you that the camera picked up 66 different colors. Isn't that amazing, Vanessa? That's way too many color changes. Way too Karen. many color changes. <laughs> so all I did is I changed that number to 20 and then touched apply and it automatically recalculated the whole design with that many fewer designs. So if you can kind of see on the, on the screen, her, Flower leaves are maybe not quite as bright right now because right. it reduced the number of colors of green. So it's a very subtle change. It's not super noticeable, 
you have to kind of be looking for it. And I ultimately made uh, chose 25 colors because I wanted to keep a little bit of that shadows and shading that was happening there. And then at this point, all I'm going to do is touch next. And my design is created in a few seconds. Now, this is where it's really exciting, because if you look over here on the left, you'll see that the diamond shape is there. That's what comes up first. The one I chose was the square. And you'll see it just recalculates and makes a brand new design that's totally different. And this is the one that I stitched out. Now, the other option was hexagon. And I kind of have always meant to go back in and do it with the hexagon because I think it gives it a completely different look to it. And it merges the colors a little bit more different. And when I touch finish, my design is finished and I'm ready to go. Isn't that amazing is, how quick and beautiful. easy that was? And it does make a beautiful piece of artwork. Now, Karen, how long did it take you to stitch that out? I, I think it took me about an hour and a half to stitch okay. it out. Well, that's it, not bad. It wasn't that bad, although there were some jump stitches. I left the jump stitches there, and I did trim them down afterwards. So, But those are the kinds of things that really it's not taking you a long time to do it. It's, sometimes it's, it takes you a while to choose your shades of colors that you're going to use. But that's all part of the fun, right? right. That's why we need more thread <laughs> the creative colors. creative process. That's right. Absolutely. So... Ladies, before you go, there are a couple questions, and Amy, I'm just going to, I can yeah. see them here. So there was a question about the, um, what type of thread or what weight of thread did you use on your uh, tile photo stitch? I used the 40 weight Robeson Anton rayon thread, and I use a 60 weight in the bobbin. Now, we do have the ability to use different weights. So sometimes if I'm using a very dense design, I'll use an 80 weight bobbin thread and it gives you a little bit lighter weight, less dense design. And our, our machines are fabulous for using all these different threads. So don't worry if you feel like trying it out, you'd be surprised how wonderful it is. <laughs> is there any other questions? Um, question about uh, photo stitch changing from Premiere Plus 2 to MySona. And I think it's, I think it has not changed so much. There may be a couple adjustments, and they're always making everything just a little bit better. Absolutely. But, uh, you still have the same choices, but I think I think things do. There's it's a little bit more sensitive. I think there's there's been some subtle changes to it, but nothing major. So if you're used to it from the Premiere Plus Ultra software, you'll be just fine with it. In Absolutely. Absolutely. My Sonet. Any other questions? Um, did they want to know, did you use a single machine or a multi-needle machine? Oh, I use a single-needle machine. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I know there are multi-needle machines out there, but I love the fact that when we can choose one color at a time, because, you know, like a multi-needles, you have maybe 10 needles, right? And then you're, you're used to, like, putting less colors on there. Here, we can go as we're going add another color, and I can change my mind in a moment's notice. So I love the fact that we have... Um, we have just choosing one color at a time. All right. All right. Well, thanks a lot. It was great to see all of you. I think there might be is another there, question. There might be one more. One more. Okay. So the question is, does this program automatically convert the uh, to basically the format you need for your machine. Once I've finished at this point, let me just show you this quickly, okay? When I go to export this design, I will have all of the formats that pretty much exist for most uh, machine designs. And wait a second, this came up as a VP3. But up here, you'll be able to see all the different formats that are showing up. It's kind of hard probably to see on the screen of yes. your Facebook Live because that box is kind of small. But any of the embroideries, you can export in almost every machine format. That's right. So some of us have multiple machines, so you can export in the format that you need. Yep. And that's, and that's a good thing because that yeah. means anybody can use our software no matter what brand of embroidery machine you have. And if you're a sewing machine collector, you, yeah. the software has you covered. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's been fabulous, okay. guys. Sonny, you want to look? I just love how it looks like needlepoint. I think that's really pretty. It is, it's the top level. Gold, I'm sorry, it's in the gold level for photo stitch and platinum. And now we have Mickey Hudson.
Mickey too has done a lot of our my so net Facebook lives. So, you know, your choices are slimming down here as other people are picking topics, Mickey. And, so, and I have to tell you, it's just very scary doing <laughs> this in front of the boss. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite? Well, like, you know, Karen says, I'm the same. I use every, every aspect of it, but uh, I do love the digitizing. And so there's multiple facets to the digitizing uh, that are available. And um, there's the Design Express, which is the what I call the down and dirty. And then uh, we have another educator that's going to talk about the more finessey one. Um, but both of them are awesome. And I am going to answer a previous question about what it, what's something different. So I will show you something different between the Premiere Plus 2 and the MySonet uh, embroidery software. So I'm just going to show you a quick little design where we're going to take a, uh, a clip art or a PNG or a JPEG, and we can turn that into um, embroidery, lickety-splickety. So we're going to start with the this guy, and then I'm going to show you the something different um, with the software on this So guy. this is the one we're going to do first. This is the one we're doing first. Nope. Nope. This little guy is the one we're doing first. Got it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to quickly change it to that. So, so this is the zebra. zebra with attitude. This is yeah. the teenage zebra. <laughs> so we're going to go from, you know, the school age zebra, toddler zebra to the teenage zebra right. in three easy steps. <laughs> <laughs> so in three easy years. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and jump right on over to the uh, create tab now i'm since i'm a mac user i'm going to talk to you mac people as well so the with it's called wizards in the windows side of things mm -hmm. and for you mac people it's the assistants and it's the exact same stuff so i'm going to come over here to express design and i'm just going to go ahead and uh express design into the hoop and you can quickly do an embroidery an outline uh or a border but we're just going to go ahead and do the embroidery and we'll just click next. Now, the next series of things like Karen showed you, it's just asking questions. It's like, you know, what do you want to do? Do we want to load it? Do we want to change the size? Do we want to crop it, etc. So here's my little creator and we're going to go ahead and click next. Do I want to crop it? No. Am I happy with the size? Sure. The color select, just like Karen reviewed with you. We'll go next, and he's going to think about it. Now, here's a wonderful thing when it comes to the the design express express design um, is that you can uh, select the fabric that you are working on. So, if I'm working on a fleece, for instance, I don't need the stitches to be so tight. I may need a little more underlay, etc. It's going to do all this and automatic. It does all the thinking for you. All the thinking for you. It's absolutely awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And there he is. So what I'm going to do here is this is something that is different. So if you have the gold level, this is this. You can do the express design in the gold level. But on the platinum, we can do a little bit more. And this is something that is amazing that as they have added to the MySonet. If I come up over here to the Home tab, I can edit the design right from my embroidery window. And when I touch Edit, it's going to automatically open digitizing for me. Automatically. It's like magic. So from here, I can come and I can select that main. Hello. I can select that main. And I can come and change these little nodes here and just point them out, give them a mohawk. So you're just clicking and dragging on individual clicking nodes. Clicking and dragging. There's so much that I can do from this. Once you're in the digitizing, I can change the fill pattern. And we'll come up and zoom in on him um, because on the punk rock uh, zebra, I did change the fill pattern a little bit on him. But it's so easy. But here... 
this is where the magic really happens. So you can see how the, the white has a pattern to it now, makes it look a little bit more like fur. And then the tail as well has had a little adjustment to it to make it look like a bushy tail. Like I say, this, this, Vanessa, <laughs> is where it gets really cool, is when I close this, the, which I, with this being digitizing, when I close my digitizing program, it's already done in the, the My Sona Embroidery window. So I don't have to worry about anything. Any changes I make in uh, uh, Stitch Editor or digitizing, it's automatically there for you. It's amazing. Very fun. Thank you, Mickey. You're welcome. Are there any questions for me? We do have one question from Gwen. She would like, she says she has had the silver subscription for a year now and she wants to change that to platinum. How would she do that so she can get this wonderful wizard? Um, it can be done. You will need to talk to the dealer, your dealer about it. Um, but yes, it, it, it and if your dealer has any questions, they can give us a call. Okay. It can be done easily at your dealership. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Just say less. Oh, did I teach you guys so well? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll take another look here at our uh, zebra with attitude. And then next, we have another new educator with us, and this is Wendy Owen. So Hi. you may see her on a future My Sonet Facebook Live because Wendy loves the software. I do. And so, what are you? What is your favorite part? Um, my favorite part is um, like Mickey. I gravitate towards the digitizing. I just um, feel like I have. Um, maximum creativity with that because I, if I see it, I want it, I get it. Um, so, and this, my sweater here, um, I digitized this design. I'm going to show you how I did that. It is applique. I actually saw this, um, something very similar to this on Pinterest. Um, and it was on a cardigan. I went to that website. Cardigan was sold out. So I'm going to make my own because again, I saw it. I wanted it. I got it. <laughs> and you could make it any color you wanted. That's right. I could. I'm surprised it's not pink. <laughs> I know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, but this here, this was my sample stitch out. So anytime you do a digitized design yourself, uh, you definitely want to do just a sample stitch out. You may end up doing two, three of them. I did uh, two of them. This is my third one. And the third one was done on uh, a knit fabric so that I had an idea of how it's going to stitch out on a fabric that is closest to what I'm actually going to put it on my end product. And you can see that this, this cat here is slightly different than this cat here. Um, I did make adjustments and change my mind that this one was too small. So I did take it into the software and I was able to resize it as well. So didn't have to go back in and redigitize it. I was just able to digitize it once and resize it. And then it. just make changes to it. Correct. Didn't have to start from scratch again. That's right. So um, the wizards are, are, are really awesome to do, but sometimes there's, you have your, your base image, your JPEG or your um, bitmap, whatever you use, it may not be as, as clear. So um, I like to lay my own stitches, if you will. So I'm going to start. So otherwise, scratch. Wendy, you're not using the wizard. You're going to actually tell it exactly where you want the stitches to be. Correct. I'm going to lay my stitch points. I just have a little more control. So I, I have an image. And that is my image. And again, it's going to walk you through um, some important questions. So I'm just going to go next. I am going to crop this just a little um, to get to pull in a little bit tighter. And I'm going to go next. The hoop, for this purpose, I'm just going to leave, leave the hoop at what it is and just say finish. 
so there um there's my cats and they are just it's just an image right now so it's sitting on my background so there's no stitches to it this no is just stitches to an it. image it's my for template. you to follow it's my template yep and if we zoom in on it you can see why i'm using it just as a template because it's very pixelated so it's going to be the wizards are going to have a little bit harder time um, giving you really smooth edge for that so the first thing i'll do now you do have a quick create where you can just let the computer do it for you but like i said it's a little jagged on the edges you can do a freehand create um it works great if you have a if this is on a tablet and you have a pen that you can use it's a little bit easier to control but the point create is my favorite it's it's kind of zen to me if you will <laughs> because you're just click 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 so i'm gonna suggest choose that one we're doing applique so i'm turning off the pattern fill and for this first step i'm just going to choose a running stitch and then if i go to create area or line I can just start clicking around my image and notice that I am not being very precise about it right now. I'm laying a foundation. And I did not get the tail in there. I did not want the tail in there because I wanted the tail to be a full a, a satin on its own. If I were to do this with the quick create, it would have picked up the whole entire out, outline, the whole silhouette of the cat, opposed to just the body. And so what you're trying to create is an applique. Correct. So and I, then you'll add the tail afterwards just in satin stitches. Correct. So for here, you can see I did okay going around it, but ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, zoom is your friend. When you're digitizing, you probably want to zoom in to about 500, maybe even 600. I also like to have mine on dual monitors because my monitor um, is a little bit bigger. So now I'm going to go ahead and move my stitch points in closer to each other. So now you're just going to fine tune it. I'm just going to fine tune it. I usually do this with a mouse. So if I click on the home, I can insert more points. So if it's not laying as well as I want it to, I can just add more points. If I hold down the shift key and click on a node or control key, sorry, it will move it will turn to a square to give you a sharper image. A nice sharp corner. Yeah, nice sharp corner. And you just do that all the way around. Um, this could take a few moments. I'm not going to do this all the way around. Hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing. So this part of, of the applique design is the baseline. This is where it's going to stitch out on your fabric. And it'll let you know where to place um, your applique fabric. So that'll be the first step. You would go all the way around Vanessa, of course, and fine tune it yeah. and, and make it what you need it to be. So those of you that have done appliques, you know that an applique is a three step process. So you get your placement line, which is just a running stitch and you place your fabric down, and then you do the second color block, which is going to be like your tack down. So it's kind of like a double stitch to hold your fabric in place, and then you trim your fabric up to that, and then your third is going to be your satin stitch or your finish stitch around to cover the edge. So that's what I did here, Vanessa. This is the first one. I laid my fabric, now we need our double stitch. So instead of going around the whole entire design again, I will just insert a color change. And I usually make it just something bright, something obscure that has nothing to do with the design. And you're not actually going to use that color no. anyway. So. No, because when we're at our machine, we could choose any, any color, color we, we want. want. For this particular design, I actually did all of my uh, stitching, in all of my applique in the same color, which was yep. black because it's on a white sweater. So I didn't have to worry about 
changing, um, changing thread. threads. So now that I have a color change, if I click on my running and uh, do a copy and then a paste, it lays it directly on top of my running stitches. So I have two different parts now. If you were to do a duplicate, and a duplicate will copy it, but when it pastes it back down, it's slightly offset. So I like to use the copy paste. That way you don't have to manipulate it to get Correct. it Correct. Right I top. don't have to adjust it. I don't have to move anything. I am just waiting for it to show up. It's being slow. You could probably go ahead. So maybe we can ask a couple of questions as you are uh, waiting here for a moment. So, so would this also would this work using an SVG file as your original image? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. And then also, could how would one use a cutting machine, like another brand, to aid in? the application process when you're you when you're point digitizing like i am today you would have to do a back step to have you'd have to do one of these using the applique option in create and that will what is what will save your cutting file um so yeah, there is a little back stepping you need to do for that, but it is possible. And when you're bringing in an SVG file, that is a very clean image. And if you just want the silhouette of the design, instead of what I'm doing is I don't want to include the tail in, in with the cat. I just want it the cat. You could use the, um, the create applique quickly. So it just really depends on what your final product is going to be. And Wendy, I sense this could be a good future my Sonet it could Facebook be. Live class. It could be because there's more detail than what I'm of what I have to, to show you. Um, unfortunately, my paste has not come in yet. But in essence, there all you're going to do is copy an, another one and paste it. Right. For your third block and make that a satin stitch. Correct. So I moved this one down. So I have two running stitches. The second running stitch, I'm going to click on the properties, change that to a double stitch. So it's going to go around your applique fabric twice. And if I added one more color change and did one more paste, I will right click on that one, change my properties. And this is where I will change it to a satin line. And I have options here. I can change the width of it. I can change the density. Most of the time I go for a density of three. I can also change my start and end points. So I did do that um, with the tail since it was, since the tail has that curve to it. I also have the same options for my satin line. On the tail, I ended it with a point because that's gonna be tucked under the fabric. So it's less stitching less over stitching yeah. I have to do. And then I also did that on um, the tail. I began it with, with more of a point. So it didn't look like my cat's tail was chopped off at the end. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Well, thank you, Wendy. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, we'll look forward to you on a future MySonet okay. Facebook Live. Thank you. So you can take another look at those little applique kitties. I just love that. And how quick and easy it is to do an applique design with any shape that you want to use. And now we're just about done. So, so this is your last chance to type in any questions that you might have. I want to introduce Dee Marie. She is also new to our team. And so you may see her on a future Facebook Live. So we have a couple more questions, I think. Um, there were a couple people asking about the cutters, uh, Vanessa and Dee Marie. And uh, I think that, you know, we... Certainly, a lot of people want to see the cutters move more quickly or work on that. So we will certainly take that back to the developers, I think, okay. is what we can say. 
And then I have to tell you guys, I hope you enjoyed um, hearing from kind of all of us. Uh, we, we all decided as we were practicing yesterday that this was way more fun to do with a group than it is when we just do it by ourselves. So you may see some more of this um, collaboration in the future. Hopefully, if you liked it like this with several of us on at a time, let us know in the chat and maybe we can do that in the future. Um, and I think the hardest thing for each of our educators was to choose their favorites. So we had so many things in the software that are are fun and that we all love and use on a regular basis. So we were kind of fighting over who got to talk about what. And so, so we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. And everybody come back in so that we can they can see all of us together. And um, we'll see you on the next Facebook Live. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.